What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cam, sitting here with my lovely wife, Vicky, and we are your hosts for the show, the podcast, Everything is We. And uh, we're back in the stew. Back in the stew. Back in the stew. In a minute. Last week, we were in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and uh, you guys show mad love to our friends, um, our family, Lorelco and Wanda Molzak. We had them as guests on the pod. And, uh, man, it's, it, it seemed like y'all was rocking with it. It seemed like y'all were really blessed. Thank you guys for rocking with us and bearing through the the audio uh, issues that man, we had. I appreciate it because I was about to cry. Yeah, she was upset. I was literally, like, going to delete the whole video. <laughs> so the thing is, like, I Lord was trying to figure out a way to take the least amount of equipment to Nashville. Right. That and still, insane. like, capture good quality audio. And for some reason, it created this delay when we did a test. We did the test and it did not do that. And it didn't do that. I was so confused. So, yeah, it was crazy. But um, appreciate y'all rocking with the video, listening to it on all the podcasting platforms, um, and just showing mad love. So we appreciate you guys so, so much. Uh, We appreciate Wanda and Lo. Y'all already know what it is. The homies. Y'all know what it is. The homies. Um, But... Uh, at this particular juncture, my wife has some uh, some some topics Ooh. that we're going to get into. Ooh. We're going to get into it, yeah, and uh, discuss. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Talk to me. Talk to me, baby. Shout out to my barber, though. Like, I wrote, uh, yes, he's looking mighty fine on tonight. What I wanted to talk about in this episode was effective communication. I had this idea, and all of my thoughts were scrambling on, on Tuesday. We were supposed to record this, so I, mean, I might not have the same excitement about the topic as I did when I had thought about all of my uh, all of my notes. Um, but it just seems like the last couple of weeks we've been learning how to effectively communicate even better than we already do because we do. I feel like we communicate pretty effectively. So I feel like the last couple of weeks we've been needing to, you know, continue in our effective communication. One because um, we work together now as a team. You know what I'm saying? We were already working together kind of as a team, but it was more so just like adulting things. It was more so like general marriage things. When we were out of town with Wanda and Lo, we had a lot of communication, not communication. We had a lot of great talks with them just about effective communication, sharing your feelings, talking about the things that are on your heart, um, why it's important to do that with your friendships as well as your spouse. Um, and we, we've been talking about that throughout the past week, few weeks too. Um, it just feels like that has just been in my head, like effect, communicate effectively. Oh, and then in the other episode, we talked about why it's important to not keep secrets. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about when I said that, but I just feel like throughout our marriage, one, we have been very transparent with each other, but I see a lot of people who don't or haven't been transparent with their spouse, um, and I feel like sometimes we use, we like use other people for the things we should use our spouse for. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Like. Come on, dig. Like we. <laughs> dig. Like I'll use me for an example because I experienced this and I mean, I'm not going to go into grave detail, but basically you tell a friend about something that happened to you or something that you did or some, or like a secret, if you will. You tell them a secret that has been, you know, you feel like, because the thing is, a lot of um, mental health issues come from secrets. Um, it comes from holding things in and not talking about it. Um, and you get in your head about it and it festers. You know what I mean? It starts growing things. Um, it grows into something else. So over time, if you don't express it or share it with somebody or, you know, allow somebody to help you work through those traumas, they will, I mean, continue to grow into actions, um, behavioral issues, whatnot. Um, so I was always taught that you don't keep secrets. I, I mean, that's what, I, that's what I've learned. If something goes wrong, you tell me. My grandma used to tell me that. My parents told me that. If something is wrong, I don't care how bad it is, you tell me what happened. I've always been that way. So when I came into this marriage, I had intentions on telling you everything. Um, but... Also, like when you have like girlfriends and stuff, you tend to talk more about things like in depth. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, so there was, I would have, if I had an issue or something like that, I'd tell my friends about it, but like with Cam, I'd just be like, oh, this happened, blah, 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 but move, move past it, you know? Um, but the lack of effective communication in that area, you weren't able to be there for me for certain things because I wasn't transparent with you about those situations. You know what I'm saying? And then later on, you're like, whoa, like if I have a whole panic attack, then you don't know where that came from because I didn't explain it to you. I may explain it to somebody else. But just because I got it off my chest doesn't mean that I effectively communicated my needs in that area. So if something goes wrong, you don't know where it's coming from. Right. Right. I feel like people do this in marriage often. They tend to have like deep conversations with their friends or their parents or whatever, but then like don't tell their spouse and be like, well, he don't get me. He don't understand, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, that's your best friend, though. You should be able to express those things with him because if something comes up, he'll know how to protect you or help you because he already knows about it, right? I feel like that that is very important. And that's why we shouldn't keep secrets, just because you just never know when something's going to come back <laughs> and, and, and affect, your, affect your marriage or your relationship. I mean, whatever you don't talk about, it's going to become a trigger. And so he may not know what triggered me and it could become an argument or, you know what I mean? Like he'd be like upset with me or worried about me and I'm not sharing what's really going on. You know, there is a, there is a saying that, uh, this couple, um, I don't know if they watch, but, uh, Richard and Liza Hines, shout out to you guys. They used to say this, um, when they would come and speak to our youth sometimes, cause they were close to our youth pastor and, they talked about how they waited to have sex before they were married mm -hmm. and they like, they stuck it through and all that. And they always said that they never put themselves in compromising positions. And you know, those of you that have creative minds, you can, you can take that in a double meaning, but I, I'm taking what you're saying is like when you, when you ensure that you don't hold secrets you don't put yourself in compromising situations mm -hmm. or situations that would foster or create an argument, a disagreement, right? Uh, a trigger, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so being open, being open, honest, and transparent ensures that you don't have a random moment where one spouse or the other feels slighted or. Yeah. Or or hurt. It's like, man, like I, I thought you told me everything. Like I thought, right. we'd, like where is this coming from? I remember why I brought this up because when we were talking about infertility, I mean, I don't want to bring up a negative comment, but we only we had majority of the comments were very very positive. Ninety one person brought up the fact that I should have told Cam that I knew something was wrong when I knew that something was wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't really know for sure, so that's why I didn't say anything. But I'm not going to explain myself. Right. Um, but it did bring up a thought in my head like, okay, when the reason you, the only reason you knew about it was because I wasn't going to say anything and God literally had to force the situation into the forefront. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to be like in a moment where somebody spoke what was going on with me because I would have never said anything because I'm, I was always so used to early on in our marriage. I was always used to holding my feelings in and not, um, and just not expressing myself in that way. Like not sharing my feelings if I felt sad or hurt or anything like that. I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, um, I didn't know how to like, what's the word I'm looking for. I didn't know how to explain or like articulate what I was going through. So it was hard for me to explain that to you and get my feelings out. And that's important because there's no way he could have been there for me had he not known. You know what I'm saying? He would have never understood how I felt unless it was told, because I wasn't going to tell him, but it was told that I was struggling or I was feeling away or I was depressed or whatever. Um, it would have been hard for me to actually say that out loud. Now I've gotten a lot better, I feel like, with effective communication, but it's still it's still a struggle. And I feel like a lot of people struggle with this and it's very important that you are upfront about your feelings and stuff, because I mean, it could, it could potentially really hurt your marriage and, and other relationships like, and other relationships, like obviously. even like even me and 
kind of like the frustrating couple months that I've been in. Like I've been frustrated with an individual and everyone I've talked to is like, well, do they know do that? They know that. Yeah, you got to like, tell them. It's like, well, I don't, I don't feel like it's worth, you know, talking to that person about it. And they're like, well, you should this stuff ain't going to get resolved if, right. if they don't know yeah. how you really feel. Yep. And too many times we feel like they're not going to understand or, mm-hmm. or me saying my piece ain't really going to make a difference or, yeah. you know, they, we always put it on them like, oh, it's, they not going to get it. They not going to understand. They don't know. Blah, 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 but if you don't blah, give blah, them the blah, chance blah. to understand, then right. that's not fair to them either. Right. And I've seen that happen to a lot of my friendships as well. Like normally when I have friendship issues, it's because somebody had a problem with me and didn't tell me. And I feel like that's unfair because if I don't know that you have a problem with me, how can I fix it? Yep. <laughs> like if you go months and months and months without telling me how you feel, I probably don't know. Uh, so you probably should say something before you just go off on me randomly, you know? Um, and just, I feel like we, as humans, we have this issue where we don't want to share our feelings because we feel like it's, it's a fear thing. It's a, it's, it's based on fear. You're, you're afraid of being rejected. You're afraid of being told no. You're afraid of, I mean, just being vulnerable, period. There's a lot of things to be afraid of, but at the same time, you cannot grow with somebody if you're not open and honest with them and vulnerable with them. A lot of healing comes from, I posted this earlier today because I took notes when we were at, um, when we were at in Nashville at the summit and they were talking about um, stress and and healing from stress and uh, being overwhelmed and all those things. And one of those, one of the ways, one of the top ways is to, relate to people like communication and relating to people who know you and love you um, that can help heal some of that anxiety, depression or whatever. Um, And we tend to think like, Oh, I can do this by myself, but that's not true. You need people. Um, And so like a lot of times we tend to forget that the people who love you and they're, they care for you and they're there for you. Like you have to be open and vulnerable with them and show them the ugly things about you, that's, I mean, I feel like when you know those things about somebody, that makes you love them more if you continue in that relationship with them and continue to grow past those not-so-cute moments. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, because I feel like the times that I really, like, knew that I loved you for real, for real, is when you weren't okay or I'm not okay, but we're there for each other when we're grieving or we're going through a hard time or like you're upset with me or I'm upset with you. Like, then I'd be like, dang, like I actually do like really care about them because anybody else I'd have been out the door. (laughs) I'd just be like, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not going to tell you nothing. Bye. But it's not like that with you or with anybody else that I care about. Like with my close friends, like I'm going to be like, no, I got to say something. No, I got to, I got to, you know, because I'm not going to just, let things die just because I don't want to express myself or because I don't, or because they don't want to express themselves. I'm not just going to be like, let you do that. And we don't talk or we don't, right. You know? Right. So keys to having a good relationship with anybody period. (laughs) Yeah. And, (laughs) and also communication, effective communication. Uh, Someone says on here, how do you deal with not knowing how to properly articulate your feelings because you don't want the other person to feel a type of way I was talking to a friend of mine and I was like bro if you got to write it down yeah that was me or for if a you got to come back you know later process it uh like hey I can't I can't say it in a way that will be beneficial for both of us right now so I'm gonna step away and get, let's let's talk about this later or let me write my thoughts down yeah, because sometimes in the moment, when you say stuff in the moment, it's not going to come off the way that you mean it. Right. So if you have time to gather your thoughts, that helps. And and writing, like literally writing, to me, is very intentional because it's like you have to you have to think about spelling and you got to think about right. writing it down. And like as you're writing it down, you're like, All right, uh, that don't make sense. Or why did I put that? You know, as you're as you're writing, writing is like just... Writing is like it's intimate, yeah. um, and and even communicating, communicating effectively is intimate. 
Mm, Someone asked me a question about hearing God and I didn't respond for a few days. And then God like kind of gave me a revelation. It's like a lot of times we want to hear God, but we want to hear God the way we want to hear God instead of hearing God the way God wants to speak to us. Exactly. Yep. And we have to effective communication is not just me talking to you the way I want to talk to you. I have to be mindful of the way you want me to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Just like, or the way I'm going to receive it. Just like when we both, you know, are, are like we talked about our deal breakers, uh, as, as we got into our relationship, well, you know, one of a big thing for me is like, don't call me on my name Mm -hmm. and okay. Just like I, I'm saying, don't call me on my name. Say she says, well, I don't like you to raise your voice. Well, effective communication, she's not going to hear me if I'm upset about something and I'm, I can't believe, like, well, I'm not, I'm not communicating effectively. Yeah. You know? So I have to take into consideration how you receive it just as much as I want to give it to you. Yeah. You know? And it's the same thing with communicating effectively from God. Like, are we, are we taking time to actively hear from God or do we just pray and you know, as we on our work with music blasting, we just expect to see a, a billboard that says God is speaking. Or, you know what I'm saying? or we pray about something and then we don't have no good relationships with anybody. So nobody can speak into us and confirm what God actually said. Because God is so always you, going to use the vehicle of people. Absolutely. The Bible absolutely. says that when a man gets married, the Bible says he will obtain favor with God and with man. A lot of the ways that we humans, because we're humans, get blessed is through the vehicle of man. God uses people people to bless us. So that's why it's important for us to have relational intelligence to understand that we need people. We need to have good, healthy, strong relationships with people. Yes, we do. Because without people, you can't get a lot done. I know there's songs that has been wrote. Uh, I N D E P E N. Do you know what that means? All I of that literally... stuff. All of that stuff is cute to sing and chant, but you can't be no. Uh, I don't need nobody. Bro. I can do it all. Bad. I can do it all by. No, 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 no. I literally wrote this down. You can do nothing by yourself. Society sells individualism. Come on, you this better come what, on no, with no, the no. notes. This is what they were saying at. Yeah, this is what they were saying at the summit. Society sells individualism. The Bible sells interdependency. Which mm. means we depend we have to depend on people. We need to die to ourselves to be healthy in relationships. Yeah. Which means you can't be so caught up in how you feel and what you want and what you need that you forget that you need other people in order for God to actually speak to you. Because yeah. even though even though God be saying stuff to you sometimes, you know, in your dreams or whatever, that don't mean that he's not going to use other people to confirm it to make sure that you Amen. understand what he said. Amen. And that's why you need to be around people who think like, not think exactly like you, but people who are on the same, in the same, what, what am I trying to say? But you know what I'm trying to say? Like you need people, you need people who actually talk to the Lord, healthy friendships, healthy community this was so, this is so key for us, man. We went on that trip to Nashville. It's just like, man, we realized we really got some people who people. are who on the same, not even just Wanda and Lowe, but just like we met a lot of people who yes. are in the same boat as us, who understand yes. what we're going through and we're able to voice yes. our frustrations. We're able to talk yes. about the things that struggle, we struggle with yes. in the realm of the sphere of yes. what we do influencing being in front of people all the time. Yes. Like it's so important to have people who understand those things. You know what I'm saying? Like-minded. Thank you. Like-minded people, like-minded people. You need like-minded people. Yes. Which is why when the, they were talking about um, why it's important to be around people who actually know you. Where does it say that? Yes. Intentionally spend time with people who know you. Connect with people. They need to know you, though. You know what I mean? Like, you're always spending time with people who don't actually know who you are, like the real, real you. You know what I'm saying? Not the you that you put on Instagram. The real you. Yep. Like, you're not going to get any of that. You're not going to get that correction when you need it. You're not going to get the... Connectivity. Like Yeah, the the connectivity. You're not going to feel those moments where, like, you were 
trying to understand something and then they make it plain to you and you're like, wow, like that makes sense. Like, thank you. And you're going through what I'm going through or whatever. Like you can speak into me because you've already gone through that. You know, this is this is what I believe is a big problem with many of us. Independence and isolation. Ooh, that's that is the struggle of my life. Independence. Is trying not to and isolate. isolation. Mm-hmm. For somebody like me, they talk about Enneagrams. We talk about Enneagrams. Enneagrams, personality types. I am it's, it's good or whatever. It's good to understand Myers Briggs. What kind of person or or like how you know you interact around various groups of people. It's good to know how to communicate with different types of people. Yeah. But, but don't don't hold yourself right boxed into that, right? Right, right. But me as a as a one on the Enneagram chart, I strive for perfection. Yes. And Sometimes striving perf- per- striving for perfection, I feel like people don't want the same level of perfection that I want. So then I'll get into the habit of I'm gonna do it myself. I'm the I'm the same. And then I overwhelm myself. I mean, I'm not a myself, one, but I do the same thing. I overwhelm myself with all of these little projects because in my head, can't nobody do it the way I feel it needs to be done because I'm going. I'm the only one that's gonna be able to do it right. We both have this problem, which is why effective communication is so important because us trying to work together, that does not work. And (laughs) in everything else, me and Cam are so compatible. But when we're working together, ooh, me trying to work with Cam. (laughs) For me doing something for so long and then him coming in and having to do that with me, I'm like, no, I do this. I got this. I know how I want it to look. I know how I want it to go. I know how I want this to be. I'm going to just do it. But then I get frustrated when I don't have no help. So then I'd be like, I need you to help me and I need you to do this and I need you to do that. And he's just like, bruh, if you let me do something, then maybe I can help you. And 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 that's how that went. So um, effective communication. Effective communication. <laughs> effective communication. Um, so it's good. It's good to understand like how you are. It's good to it's good to have some some info, some facts, some data yes. about you. But it's a springboard though. It's like right. you you get that info and then you change right? and get better. Exactly. That's where I was going. I, I can't say, well, this is just how I am. And they, and they just, they just going to have to like, well, well, that's not fair. No, that's not fair. not fair for everyone else to have to learn and grow and change. Mm-hmm. But you can and stay the you. same so we can revolve around you. So that's, that's, that's the, the enemy of independence. And then the enemy of isolation is I'm the only one. I'm going through this by myself. I'm this alone. is just me. Yep. I don't nobody know what I'm going through. Yep. Nobody knows the, the trouble, trouble I've, I've seen. seen. <laughs> like the woe is me. Yeah. That was me. Like, bro, everybody has stubbed their toe before. You're not the only one. And I feel like we get when you get in your head, when you're in your head. You convince yourself of the, well, sometimes that's the devil, but we convince ourselves that we're alone and nobody understands because you are, you're in your head. Yep. If you don't say it out loud and share it with somebody, you'll never know if anybody else is going through it because you don't talk about it. You don't and talk. this was me when, uh, like, we be first, the first couple years of our marriage, when I was really struggling and going through, I wasn't talking about my feelings. I didn't know how to, I'd never done it before. And so I just kept recycling all these thoughts and feelings I had without actually opening up to anyone about it. But as soon as I started opening up and people started, well, people found out and then I was forced to be vulnerable. I was forced to have to share my emotions, share my feelings and talk about things. It literally opened the floodgates and like all of a sudden all my feelings start coming out. Like I have so many feelings about everything, didn't know what to do with them, but I learned over time how to articulate my feelings, how to talk about them, how to bring it up, how to have conversations with Cam, how to have conversations with my friends, how to have conversations with my own parents, like about how I'm feeling, what I'm going through. I had to learn how to do those things over time. But as a person who likes to isolate, who recharges alone, because I am technically half introvert, half extrovert, I do like to recharge alone. Um, and that's fine. Being, being alone is fine. I like to spend time by myself. Um, but at the same time, if something is wrong or I'm going through something, I know I need people. So I can't isolate. So consciously I make the decision to 
share my feelings, talk about what I'm going through, talking, talk about what I'm dealing with, cry in front of someone and allow people to feel those emotions with me so that I'm not holding things in and bottling things in. Cause if you hold things in at some point, something going to trigger you, you going to explode. That's only happened once for me and Cam saw it and he was like, bro, what is this? Cause I've never seen this before. And I'm like, sorry, this is just something I just never processed. And I, I probably needed to process that. I probably should have talked to you about that like a long time ago. Um, just never came up, but uh, you know, it's just, you have to learn how to process your emotions and Cam's the same way. Like he's blown up in front of me before and I'm just like, Whoa, where is this coming from? And he's like, you know, sorry, just was holding all that in. Never got a chance to let it out. And the thing about me is, which is why certain things have come up in such an abrupt way after a long period of time, I forget or I had never addressed things like like certain things from like when I was growing up or like my childhood or like teenage years or whatever. Like I didn't I always say I didn't have feelings back then, but it's just that I never knew how to express them because I never had to. Um, or at least I didn't want to, like if I, my parents were mad at me or got, I got in trouble or something, they asked me to express my feelings. I'd be like, no. And I wouldn't say anything. And I would just get a whooping and go to sleep. Like I would not share my feelings at all. My parents would just open up and share all their feelings. My dad would be crying <laughs> and I'd just be sitting there like, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I just did what I wanted to do, but never really process why I made certain decisions, why I thought the way that I did why I was the way I was I just always thought well this is me this is it I, I mean I don't know I don't care and so coming into marriage I'd never actually sat down and dealt with my thought processes why I made certain decisions so later on in life things come up and it's like dang I've never processed how that actually made me feel or how I may have affected someone else in my process of not feeling anything you know what I mean I, I, I never addressed that. So then all of a sudden now I'm having to, as a as an adult, deal with things that I went through as a kid or as a teenager or whatever that I never processed. That's why it's important, number one, not to keep secrets, but also number two, to learn how to effectively communicate your feelings and even let yourself feel things. Yep. Because some if y'all like me, if anybody out there is like me, I was so good at not letting myself feel things that I didn't even know how I felt about it until years later. And it's not that it's not that you didn't let yourself feel. It's just that you suppressed the feeling. No, I didn't let I did not let myself feel. I said, well, suppressing. Yeah, yeah you but suppressed it because in, it came back suppressing up. Suppressing is intentional avoidance of feelings. Like when you, you, I consciously made the decision to be like, I don't feel this. I'm forgetting about it. I'm moving forward. It's dead to me. Like I have a, I can do that. That's not healthy. <laughs> you, you, you think you can? I thought I could. As an adult, I can't because because it's, you're holding it. It's it's just like it's just like me. Like I know for me, I can I can suppress. I'm yeah. like, man, I ain't gonna deal with that. But when it continues to keep happening, mm -hmm. me, I I'm like I'm an open book. Right. If I'm going to do something, I'm gonna tell somebody. Yeah. And if I don't tell somebody, and it keeps happening. Eventually, I'm just gonna explode. Yeah, and that's when people are like, man, like Cam, like you're just such a nice guy, and I'd be like, uh, well, you I know, hold a lot of things. I hold a lot of things in, but but like I will hold stuff in, and then the moment that that you you know you the last one, <laughs> like like when Grandma and them used to say, the you last on my drop. last nerve. The, the, like, there's only one nerve. The minute left? that you hit my last nerve, and then I snap, then it's like. Oh, it's bad. And that's what's happening too many times with too many of us. We let people get on our last nerve. Mm -hmm. We let people get to that last. We, let, we wait till we have last. one nerve left to address something. And it's like, brother, you have to come to the realization that you have to stop letting it get to that point. Right. And you have to deal with it the moment that you feel offense, the moment that you feel pain, the moment that you. And it's like that aha moment. Where you're like, wow, when I deal with stuff <laughs> in its inception, I actually am able to heal, process. Because yes. if you think about move it, on. the root can't grow that deep if you pull it out when it's still a seed. I'm going to need you to break that down because like, I wanted to like, like say a amen. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, if a seed is sown, okay, you put a seed in the ground. 
if you pull it out before it's had long enough time to get watered on, to get, you know, to start growing roots and sprouting Mm -hmm. into something, growing into something, if you pull it out of the ground before then, it'll still just be a seed and it won't, it won't grow into something bigger. And then you won't have to struggle trying to pull it up because the roots aren't deep yet. It won't be fully developed. It won't be fully developed. If you wait till something fully okay. developed okay. to try to pull it up, it's okay. going to hurt a lot more. Right. It's going to hurt a lot more. I'm with you. It's going to hurt a lot more. If you it wait, if you wait until it's a tree to pull it up. It, it ain't coming up easy. It's going to take a whole lot of storming and, and lightning to strike it down. You know what I mean? But if you if you just if it starts off just as a little bitty, just a little bitty, you know it's there, you address it, dig it up, toss it. But if you wait, oh, if you wait, the longer you wait, the deeper them roots get. Comment says, I have been offended by things that people have said to me at work and I walk away and don't say anything. Everything that we're offended by it doesn't need doesn't to be warrant a response. No, not everything. To that individual. Not everything needs to be addressed. There's a song that the old folks used to sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs we bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. We got to take some stuff to prayer and allow God to download the answer or the solution on how we should respond. Mm-hmm. Some stuff. Some stuff doesn't. People have said stuff to me at my job. And I laughed and I was like. Tuh, I'm not going to be here much longer. So I don't even have to. Yeah. I don't. You crazy. But even still like. Even with. Even with what I was talking about. Um, in the uh, infertility episode. When I was talking about the things that were said to me. When I online. I can't. I can't do nothing about that. Like, if people are saying mean things to me online, I don't know these people. I can't go find them. I can't talk to their mama. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't. There's nothing I can do. I can just see it, delete it, block. I can respond, but I don't know them personally, so it's still going to, the words will still be there if I don't deal with it. You know what I mean? I still have to deal with how it made me feel outside of just them saying it. See? Outside <laughs> Outside of them saying it, I have to deal with how it made me feel and deal with my own feelings, you know, because I can't change them. I can't change what they said. I can't take that away that it happened already. And what I used to do was, well, they said what they said. It don't bother me. I don't feel nothing. It don't I I don't care. (laughs) It don't bother me. I'm a strong, independent black woman. and I don't care what anybody says about me ever. Words don't hurt me. I don't care. Game for game. Okay. <laughs> that we that is an inside joke that nobody's gonna get. Um, but that was me. I was like, man, I don't care. That don't bother me. I don't care. I know who I am. But if you never deal with how it made you feel, if you ignore the feelings and don't deal with how it made you feel, it's still gonna affect you, whether you believe it or not. It it affects you. So you have to deal with that, like he said, take it to God, child. Some stuff you just gotta cast. Don't reel it back. Just cast it. Just throw the whole the whole fishing rod out there. Don't even try to reel it back. <laughs> Ooh. Pastor Mike was saying something good when we was at church Tuesday. He said, he said, this man said, anxiety is just imagination and fear having a baby. Or imagination and fear had a baby. And it, it's anxiety. That was like, whoa. That, that hit me. Because... Like, even though I feel like I'm not a fearful person, like, I feel like stuff don't, I don't be afraid of stuff. Like, I'm not, I don't have many fears if like that. We, I mean, obviously that's a normal thing to fear, to have fear. You know, everybody has fear at some point. Right. But if you have a very strong imagination, like I do, if you have a very, like, strong mind, I think a lot. I'm a thinker. I'm a very analytical thinking type person, okay? Um, very vivid imagination, very vivid thoughts, colorful all that um so that is a blessing but also when it is unchecked and it's not renewed (laughs) when my mind is not renewed constantly when I'm not you know checking my thoughts and making sure that I'm bringing them under the subjection of the Lord 
Ha. You know what I'm saying? When I'm not, oh. when I go three, four months without reading my Bible, when I go three, four months without praying and talking to God, because I feel like I got this and I don't need, mm-hmm. I don't need nobody help. Because people like us, y'all know, if you like me, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we can, we can neglect, neglect God a little bit, be thinking, oh, I have faith. I'm good. Like, I don't need to read my Bible today. I got this. I'm going to go off for the prayers that I had yesterday. But <laughs> you thought, um, but anywho. Yeah. So what was I saying? Girl. Oh, imagination. So if you have a strong imagination like I do and you think a lot, um, those fears, even the smallest tiny bitty, tiny bitty fear, or even just like something somebody might say to you or whatever, you ponder on it. And it's like, well, that ain't true. But like, maybe what if it was? And I'm the kind of person like, because I do think so, I'm an analytical thinker. Sometimes I will... Not gonna call it playing devil's advocate because we don't side with the devil. That's what you said. Um, but no, sometimes I do. Ain't no being no an advocate for no devil. I, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do consider the opposite argument as if I'm in somebody else's shoes because I like to have perspective. So sometimes I will consider if somebody has an argument against me, I'll consider whether or not it could be true. So I'll be like, well, let me see in my head, like, does that actually make sense? Or how could they think that? Why would they think that? How would they make that assumption about me? How would they, how could they have come to that conclusion? So then I start processing how somebody else thinks. And then the lie starts to kind of become a little bit true in a way. Cause I can be like, Oh, I see how you could think that because blah, 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 blah. Oh, maybe I actually am kind of, and that's how my thought process goes. So it's like, I don't know how that's fear per se, but people who are imaginative, imaginative like that and think deeply when you're in your head and it's not checked, you don't check them thoughts. They can turn into something that you were not intending for it to turn into. Mm. And now you have anxiety because now. now you're like now. Well, this is me. Now I'm like, OK, I know me. I know who I am. I know how I am. These people don't know me. They don't know me, Y'all but know they me. said something negative about me. And I want to, f- why would you say that? So now I'm thinking, why would they say that? And then I'm looking at myself like, let me see if there's something about me that they might have said that, that makes sense. And then I'm like, well, dang, there is this problem with me. There is this problem with me. And I'm like, well, dang, maybe I'm not as cool as I thought I was. So then it's like the fear of people seeing me not as cool as I thought I was. Or as you want them to be. Or as I or, or as want, I want people you, to yeah. see me. If people don't see me the way I see me, then I'm like, well, dang, am I actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Because mm-hmm. maybe they don't see what I thought I was trying to show. And so then there there goes the anxiety of, well, if I post this, what they going to say? Is this person going to say this? This person going to say this? I already know what they finna say. They finna say this. And so then it just ends up, well, I'm not posting nothing because I don't want nobody to say nothing because I don't feel like dealing with it. That's anxiety. That's how my, my brain works. And then that that translates into, man, I'm going through this right now, but I don't want to tell Cam because he's not even he gonna say this. I know what he's gonna say, so I don't even need to tell him because I already know what he's gonna say. And it's so funny to me that we assumptions. Put, we put people in these assumption boxes like like we know everything that humans are gonna do. We do. And you we never give people a chance to literally blow our minds and actually be there for us oh yeah mm-hmm. we shut it's people like, out oh, before like, they you need to give people a chance to care and support and yeah. and pray and like you we don't give people a chance because in our heads we've already they don't know assumed the worst and they can't, can't nobody handle this but me projecting your own fears onto other people very damaging to your relationships. You have to be very careful about that. I liken this to to things that I see with like amateur golfers. Beginning golfers is they'll make a mistake and then they want to c- correct the previous mistake that they made, but they're in a bad spot. So really they just need to make a simple move to get themselves back in the right position but what they do is they compound mistakes mm. and they do something else to try to be a hero. To make it's up like, for it. It's like right. your level that you're at right now doesn't require you to be the hero. It just requires you to get back on the right track. Mm. I just said something. You did. You did. You said something. And when we compound 
our Ooh. negative thoughts and our our negative words towards people and it's like well they don't know and then they this and then they this and then yeah and, and then and now you're compounding the things that people that you feel people think about you with your own feelings with, yeah right, with your own feelings mm-hmm. and negative Projecting. and negative don't never work nope and that's how people tend to overcompensate as well you start overcompensating trying to prove that you're not something when nobody even asked you. Yep. <laughs> nobody even cares. Like you got all these people out here. Cause this is basically what social media is. Yep. All these people out here overcompensating, trying to prove they're the best, look the best, have the most money, uh, get a new car. I can do this. I can do that. And it's like, well, nobody asked you to do that. Like we yep. just wanted you to be your regular self, but here you go trying to prove something because somebody said something to you 45 years ago. Yep. And you trying to keep up with this idea of success that is based on fear and people saying mean things to you when you could have just been like, man, I'm going to just heal from this. And so I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. I see it a lot in athletes and entertainers. They say stuff like, yeah, my middle school teacher said I wasn't never going to be nothing. So, you know, I, I, I'm i glad I'm here today because I wanted to prove that. Yeah. And it's like, bro, that middle school teacher, you know how many people, you know how many students have passed through it? Right. (laughs) She's probably said that about 97% of the students that have come in her class. There's a difference between something driving you to want better for your family and for your life and, and things that you're, that things that you wanted to accomplish because you wanted to prove something to yourself, but to try to prove somebody else wrong. Like, when does that ever work out? Because after you prove them wrong, now what? There's always going to be something. It's like people who are that goal oriented based on like deficits or trauma, they're always going to not need trauma. That sounds bad, but it's like you always kind of need that to keep going. Because then when things are good, it's like, well, now I got to self-sabotage to keep going. Yeah. It's basically what happens. It's like people who are like that, they end up self-sabotaging. Not on purpose, not because they want bad things to happen to them, but it's because they, that's how they've been in survival mode. So they all they know how to do is survive. So then it ends up turning into, when it's unchecked, when it's undealt with, it ends up turning into them self-sabotaging or hurting other people around them because it's just negative energy. It, it comes from a negative place, you know? Moving forward in life, it's, it always comes from something negative. It just oozes out of your skin, the negativity. Everything that you've based your life on was never built on something positive. So you don't know what positive feels like. That's sad. And then that's how we end up in broken relationships with people because the negativity that you never dealt with, it's still there. So then you end up attracting people who also have negative energy. You Most of the time, the energy that you give off. Yeah, if you're if you're oozing negativity and uh, trauma, you're probably gonna you're probably gonna be attractive to people who also have trauma. Yep, and also are are dealing with some type of deficits that they haven't dealt with themselves, or are struggling with some type of deficit they haven't dealt with themselves. It's like y'all. It's like y'all's stank stank together (laughs) i mean you don't never see like mean girls hanging out with nice girls you know what i mean like the mean girls always gonna be around a mean girl so they can talk mess they're not gonna talk mess with nice people because nice people gonna check them and tell them no you probably shouldn't do that that's mean right so they end up being around negative people because they're negative and they're not going to be around people that can actually hold them accountable y'all my favorite movie is mean girls my favorite movie is mean girls okay in the movie if you haven't seen it sorry i'm about to spoil it for you in the movie Katie was a nice, sweet girl from Africa. She ain't know nothing about nothing about high school. She goes to high school. She's pretty. She finds the other pretty girls who are really mean. And then she ends up turning into them and becoming a mean girl herself. Not because she wanted to be mean, but because if you hang around them type of people long enough, that's how you're going to be. They, they're, yep. they're seeping. They're oozing all of their emotional trauma onto you. You're going to end up like them. Which is why you got to be around like-minded people who can build you up. See, this goes back to the, what the original topic was about, effective communication. I mean, so, I mean, if you're single and you want to be with, if you want a good man, man, you got to, y'all got to be able to talk about stuff. How can two walk together except And heal from things. Yeah, and heal from things. 
and effectively communicate your feelings. Trauma bonds. A lot of the things that we, we, us, a lot of things that we um, went through are very similar in our lives. Like a lot of things that we struggled with are very similar. And I feel like that was one of the reasons why we ended up liking each other because we both understood what it was like to be us. Yeah. And we connected and bonded off of that. Not that it was trauma, but I mean, we did. <laughs> we well, did kind of bond off of things that we were going through at the time. A lot of what people have made relationships about, some things they've over-spiritualized, but what I'm about to say is, I believe, 100% true and necessary for people. You have to be with somebody that can help you accomplish the assignment on your life and they understand it. Because there are yeah. there are girls that I dated and it's like, you in church too much. And it's like, oh, you don't get it. And I knew, even from a young age, even, you know, in my innocence, like, I was like, I, I, church is, I just always knew, like, nah, this is going to be a part of my life. So you got to find And then as I got there. older, yeah. even when I was living in sin, I knew, same. If I heard you in church, too much, well, yeah, I, we ain't going to work because yeah, the kingdom is a part of my life. It's very true. It's like <laughs> I, I had the same experience. Like there were guys that I liked or whatever. And I knew I just knew I knew they weren't going to work for me because they didn't. We didn't have that type of connection. Like we didn't have that level of understanding to where I knew like you're not going to fit into my family. You're not going to work for me. Yep. It's just not going to work. Because we don't have that similarity. Even like some of the things, the negative things about me that I didn't necessarily like. It's like somebody's going to need to understand these things because this is obviously coming from how I grew up. If you don't get how I grew up, then how would you know how to help me? You know what I mean? Or how would you even know how to talk to me about it? Like I feel like a lot of our communication is effective because you get it. And not that you have to get everything. You don't have to understand everything I go through. But at the same time, like, we understand we were attracted to each other for that reason. God will give you what, what you, need. you need. Who you need. My God said letting. this on Tuesday, too, and we've been saying it, too. My allergies and sinuses always want to act up around the time of night. He was like, some of us been praying for God to give us the the mate that we want you don't need that person <laughs> the person you want you don't need and the person that god has for you that you need you at first you ain't gonna want them over time you gonna start looking at it, you're like oh well i guess johnny is kind of cute <laughs> that is exactly it's funny it's really funny because that's exactly how our relationship went <laughs> For those of y'all who know the story, hey, you know, I've, we explained listen. that we were not attracted to each other. We were not attracted to each other. But I was I was attracted to her into a le- in, well intellectually. But let's let's be deep. Like, yeah, we just go keep it like it is. We weren't each other's type. No, we weren't each other's type. Because the first time you see someone, you don't see their intellect. No. So like let's be real here. You don't see what they go through. You don't see you it's very superficial. So I knew the foundational things I knew about you were not things that I thought that I, no, I knew what I needed. I just didn't want it. Um, <laughs> I just didn't want to be with somebody who was a preacher's kid. I didn't want that because I know what that entails because I've been through that. But turns out I actually needed somebody who's been through that to understand what I'm going through so we can work together as a team. But at the time, I was like, no. I was picking you apart at first. I mean, we've all, we all do this. We pick people apart, right? So I was picking you apart like, mm, no, he went, look at him. He wore glasses. Like... <laughs> like oh no he's lame looking like look how he dresses ew um but then over time it's just like that stuff didn't even matter anymore it's like actually i really like him so what are you finna do y'all he's finna act stupid he's finna act stupid i don't even know how to use my oh here we go he's finna act stupid why why are you doing this? Stop, because you're hitting the mic and you, we gotta go home, y'all. We gotta. <laughs> I can't stand you. I we can't gotta, stand you. We gotta I can't, go. We gotta go. I can't stand you. Anyways, give us a summary, babe. Just give us a summary. 
Summary. Oh boy, those of you who know, you know. Shout out to, to say Pops. It. Yeah, I just had to say it. I ain't had to say it. So, guys, here's the thing: vocalize how you're feeling, and don't assume that somebody knows how you're feeling, especially if you really care for them and love them. Because when you love someone, you just don't treat them bad. Oh, how I feel so sad. And treating them wrong can be communicating wrong. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we don't, we always We're think, not trying to communicate mm, the way that. I feel this thing in my spirit. Okay. We always consider treating someone wrong with being mean or being nasty or yelling or screaming or not being considerate. But also treating someone wrong could be not communicating effectively. Or not communicating at all. If communication never comes out of your mouth, then it's not communication. That was stupid, but but, makes, but like it makes sense. It, it's it's real. If you have a conversation with someone in your head and in your head they don't get it. You never gave them a ch- a real chance to actually hear you out. And we have to make, we have to be intentional about communication as well. And I feel like that comes with um, making time for people. You know what I'm saying? Make if you're only, room. if you're only communicating in passing or you're only communicating, funny, he's calling me. you're only communicating in the moment um, or you're only like, I don't know, like if you if you don't actually make the time and that's one thing me and Cam have learned to do is we have meetings, we have check ins um, and we make it a whole thing like a separate day from date night. We actually have meetings um, and check in with each other. OK, how are things going with this? How's going with this? We go over the business stuff. We go over the house stuff and then we talk about is there anything you need to get off your chest? Is there anything you need to say? Um, and it doesn't always have to be that deep, but it's a safe space. And there needs to be a safe space for y'all to communicate. There needs to be a safe space in every relationship for you to communicate. It can't just be like a hostile environment when you communicate. It needs to be like, I'm setting aside a specific time because I'm a quality time person. So that makes sense for me. Um, but there needs to be a specific time set up, set aside for y'all to just really communicate effectively on purpose. Like, you know, how when you just talk about things in the moment or like in passing, you just like, okay, whatever. You got other stuff on your mind. You're probably going through your phone, something on TV. Somebody done said something you already, like you just came home from work. And you know what I'm saying? Like there needs to be like a designated, okay, I've created time for this. My mind is clear. Now I can make room. You know, it's like how you don't, you can't, you can't just read your Bible while you, I don't know, driving. (laughs) Because you're focused on something else. Your focus needs to be solely on that particular activity. You know what I mean? Um, that's intentional. And that makes that person that needs to express what they need to express feel like there's a safe space for them to do that. Make room. Make room for love. Make room for communication. Make room for intimacy. Make, make room for people. Make room for fun. To help you and love you and make care for, for you. Make room for dating. Mm-hmm. Make room for... Friendship. Growth. Make room for growth. Make room for growth. Well, listen, dearly beloved, we love you. God bless you. We, we thank you so much for joining us on tonight. As we conclude tonight's revival, I just believe that there are five of you out there that that have, yes, I see it now, $17. Oh, wow. We're not doing that. That is not (laughs) what we're doing. That is not what we're doing. No, I'm just playing, man. Listen, love you guys so much. Once again, this is your host, Cam and Vicky Logan, with the podcast, Everything Is We. Like, comment, subscribe, share, follow us everywhere. As my wife continues to click around this this loud glass. Shout out to our place. <laughs> Come on, sing it with a bit. I'm a soldier. I'm mad at him singing. It has the singing. Oh my god, I'm it has the singing. In the army. In the army. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier, yeah. Put your hands together. Right there. 
Take another key. <laughs> I'm finna go make this chicken. I'm done with you. Ah, ah, ah. God bless you, Saints. We love you. Peace. <laughs>